everyone, it's Diane with So Batik. And I am, as you can probably see, not in the office today. I um, am still at home. It's February 22nd and we have had a crazy weekend this past weekend. Um, actually, it started on Friday, a blizzard, snowstorm, um, high winds, whatever it was, but we, our farm, I'm out on a farm in rural North Dakota, and we are open to the north, and it has been an amazing windstorm from the north for four straight days, and um, it really socked us in here pretty good. So we were able to get um, the snow blown in front of our uh, garage today, so tomorrow we'll be back in the office, um, but hopefully this all dies down, and it'll be <laughs> a little bit back to normal. But February can be quite interesting here in North Dakota. So I'm hoping that spring is right around the corner. It really would be great. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about the weather, but um, I did have an opportunity over this past weekend to take some time in my sewing space and reorganize. A while back, we moved my long arm into the office and upgraded it to have a computer-driven system on it. And so we're able to do a lot of really fun quilting projects in the office. And that gave me a little bit more space here at home. And so I rearranged a bunch of stuff, moved a table from over there, over here. And um, in that process, I decided that a few things I needed to do here that uh, could spruce this room up a little bit and really make it kind of me. Right now, you see that? There's nothing on the wall. Um, there's the TV, that's gonna go somewhere else. Um, just a whole bunch of stuff I really wanna do in this room, which will be fun to share. But I also looked at our ironing board and um, just different things that I use every single day when I sew, and I wanna spruce them up. And I have never done a tutorial on our ironing board covers. We sell project kits. And I thought, you know what better way to kind of do my own thing here at home than to take you through a couple of tutorials and steps that I really like to follow to make the ironing board covers. I've made them in the office, so our office looks dandy. Um, but here at home, they really don't. I still have the old gray uh, cover on one, an old blue cover on one. I have a wall-mounted ironing board that um, we have in our closet that just, that comes out. And so I wanna redo them all. So what I did is I looked in, in my closet to see what fabric I had um, casually taken from the office to uh, use eventually. And this is what I'm gonna use it for. So I grabbed a couple of coordinating fabrics. They're kind of in the blue family. And so I have one of our very old uh, 108 inch wide fabrics, which is the Vine Lake. That is going to be on my big board. And then I selected a um, spray lake, which is going to be on the A-frame that I have here. Right now I actually, because I needed to save space, I have set my big board on top of my A-frame ironing board and I need to change that so that I can use both at the same time. So this will be great. They're gonna match nicely. And then um, I'm going to use, this is like a scrap, it's even got, you know, fabric from it. But anyway, this I'm going to use, this is the Phoenix Dusty Denim, and that's going on the wall-mounted ironing board. Um, that is going to be interesting. It, it, it measures smaller than an A-frame, of course, and bigger than a table top uh, board. So it measures 11 and a half by 43 inches. And the same steps, I'll follow the exact same steps for all three of these ironing board covers. And believe me, I'm not gonna take you through each one, but I'm gonna show you a little bit of the intricacies of each one. And I think I actually have to get my screwdriver out to take the ironing board off the mount that's in the closet um, before I can fully put that one back, you know, the ironing board on, cover on. So we'll see how that works. But anyway, let's get started and um, I have to iron up my fabric, so it has been pre-washed. Please make sure 
you, if you get one of our kits, please make sure you pre-wash the fabric um, because you're going to be using with your iron you're going to be using steam you're going to be using water whatever it happens to be it is a batik and we just want to wash it get rid of any excess dyes and wax so that all of our ironing experiences are perfect okay so do that i just have to iron up my fabric and then i'm gonna we're gonna start measuring and cutting the fabric and getting it ready to go so all we need for this project is our fabric, and I'll show you the various sizes so that you know how much yardage you need. We need batting. Our kits at Sobatique include two layers of wool batting because wool really keeps the heat nice. And um, I really like working with that. And we've put that on all of our ironing boards that we have in the office. And it's wonderful and it's easy to replace. So if you want a fluffier ironing board, um, add more layers of wool. And I just find it easy to do and we don't have to worry about any of that stuff that we get when we buy an ironing board cover. Um, I like the paddedness of it and it is perfect. And then the other thing that comes in our kit is the elastic. We are going to use elastic around the edges to keep it secure. I Several of my ironing board covers that I have here have the drawstring in it where you can secure it, take it off, wash it, put it back on again. I really didn't want to do that with the design that we had because um, there's too much fussing with it. And sometimes you don't have the strength to just sit there and pull the thread to make sure that all corners are tight and, and all of that. We can achieve the same, um, I you know, the same uh, secureness of the ironing board cover with simple elastic going uh, uh, positioned around each one of the corners and the end of an A-frame as an example. So those are the three things that I use when I make ironing board covers. So let's get started. <music> is my tracing pencil or whatever chalk that you like to work with but I have this is the ultimate marking pencil by Hansi and it's really a great pencil for many many uses I'm going to show you this stuff on our big board and this is the big board this is the cover that exists now with the um, batting and cushion, which is not very much, as you can see. So we're gonna replace that with our wool and the cover. So I'm leaving mine on. You can take the cover off so you have a nice uh, distinct edge here to trace, but there's not much stuffing or um, stabilizer underneath this at all. So I'm gonna leave the cover on, pull my fabric back so that it's centered over the top of the board. Use the edge of your pencil and just slightly kind of rub it as you go around because we want to find that edge. That becomes our line from which we cut the fabric to fit the top of our board. I'm working on the back side of the fabric. And so the, the top side or whatever you determine to be your top side, we're working with a batik. So they look pretty similar on both sides. The top side is touching the ironing board cover. So always work on the back side. So 
it's too big to show you in this video, but just continue going all the way around the top of your board, your A-frame or your tabletop, and we'll come back and I'll show you what the next step is. Each one of my ironing board cover fabric, they're all marked now with the initial outline of the board. Now what we need is a small ruler and our pencil and mark three inches away from our initial chalk line. And this will give us our seam allowance and casing for the elastic. So take the time to get this step right and just mark all the way along in little increments. I'm not gonna do a continuous line because when I come back through here with my scissor or rotary cutter, whichever you choose, we're going to cut along this line. So I keep my markings pretty close together so that I can just use a scissor and cut away. So continue marking your fabric all the way around. I'm gonna do this on all three of my projects. And I don't know if that was such a great idea to do three at a time or not three at a time, but I certainly am going to get this project done. So we'll be right back. is to iron the first edge 3 eighths of an inch all the way around and then what we're going to do is stitch right along this fold only around the curve and that's going to be a gathering stitch so turn your sewing machine to a basting stitch and run it all the way around each one of the curves so if you're working on the big board, all four corners will have a curve. So we want to make sure that we create a basting stitch right along this fold line. Okay, and that's going to help us form our curve in a little easier manner than attempting to burn your fingertips <laughs> trying to press as you go around this curve because the tighter we work inside the curve here the more we have to to iron and we want to use a basting stitch on our sewing machine to make that task just a little bit easier now if you're working on an a an a frame style then you need to run your basting stitch Again, along that curve where you feel comfortable because the minute you get around the curve, you end up with a straight edge. So we don't care about that. All we wanna do is make sure that we can gather around the curve. So do a basting stitch on your A frame along the point of the A and the two bottom corners. I'm gonna do the same thing around my closet ironing board cover as well the top of the A and the two corners. This is the bottom corner of the A-frame and we're just going to stitch along that fold in a single basting stitch. And I set my stitch width to be as wide as it possibly can be. Or I should say long, is it long or is it wide? Anyway, <laughs> we're going to take it around the curve here and then add the stitching to the other line or the other side. And then just make sure you leave enough of a thread pull as well. 
And coming along this next curve here, starting, I think that's about right, right along that fold. And give it a good stitch all the way along. And if you have to pivot, just stop and pivot until you get straight to the flat area. And then we're going to stop again because we're not gathering anything in the straight area. There, I want to get my fabric flat and then keep going. There we are. And then again, make sure you have a good thread pull and clip your threads. Now we're ready to, you see that here? Now we're ready to gather that up. This is the big board and the corners on this one are a little bit easier to work with just because it's not such a point um, like the A-frame is. And so we'll just pull the threads I almost pull it towards half of the curve and then go around and grab the thread from the other side and pull. And then just put your hands inside and see where we're at. That actually looks pretty good. And I don't do anything with the threads until I'm done pressing everything in place. Pinning it just a little bit. That one I'm going to even out just a little. You know, work your finger with the gathering here to make sure that it is even. And there we go. So that is one corner. And I have so many different size pins. I ran out of clips because I'm doing too many of these at once. So I'm going to pin in a couple of places here. We'll slide this over and do this other side. And I'm going to start over here and just gather it just a little bit till it curls in. And then the thread on this side till it pulls in. The, the corners on a big board and the back side, I should say the, the opposite side to the A point on an A-frame really are simple to do because it's not dramatic. But we want to get rid of any flat spot there. So let me, oh, one thread at a time. Make sure you only have one thread that you're working with here. There we go. And just pull that just a little bit more to get some gathering right in that flat spot there. Just drop your thread move this around and press. Now I end up eyeballing the half or half an inch here or three quarters of an inch. Just make it even. Whatever that is, we have to make sure that the elastic simply flows through the casing. And I'm using 3 8 inch elastic you can use elastic cording. You can use a quarter inch elastic. Use whatever you have. Don't let it be, personally, I wouldn't let it be larger than a half of an inch. Um, just because we want it to be tight, not doesn't necessarily have to be thick. Okay, but if that's what you have at home, definitely use it. And on the big board, we're only going to insert the elastic on the corners because the rest will be straight. So this is our tight spot, is each one of the edges, the short edges, I guess is how I should describe that. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to stitch this down, starting and stopping based on your plat pattern. We're going to start and stop right here for the big board on each edge and then finish stitching so that we have a nice edge on all the straight portions of the ironing board covers.
I don't have my quarter inch or three quarter inch elastic at home here. So what I have is cording and this will work just as well. And I'm putting it through the sides of the big board and it's a little bit more difficult to get a safety pin around that little guy, but I still do this the exact same way I've always done any of our elastic. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's super, super easy. So let me find the end here. I've already done the other side. And what I'm going to do is just slide this through this opening and gather it up as I go and just keep pushing it through. Everybody has their little method for putting elastic into a casing and I just get it started and the measurement that I used for our big board was 16 inches is all I'm using for each side the short side of the of the big board here and I watch this as I go the easier thing to do probably I shouldn't say easy but safe is to put a pin in here Let's see here. And pin it to the opening so that it definitely doesn't go any further into the casing. There we go. And keep it going through here. Just keep working it. I'm pulling it as you go. I always double check it to see how far we are. And when I get over to the edge here, a little bit closer. Now we have to go all the way over to this opening, but I stop and I take a pin and I pin through the safety pin that's inside my casing. I just pin it so that it doesn't move. I come back over here and try to pull this through. Now, hold on to this guy, because what I'm gonna do is take that pin out, slide that in a little bit further. This is actually not that hard to do. I just simply put this inside the middle and then stitch it down. And what we're going to do is stitch it across the casing to make sure that it's secure. And I try to push, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I really try, I'm just gonna use my seam ripper to put this right inside the casing. See if I can grab that there. There we go. And then stitch across this opening. I change my stitch width or stitch length down really small. I think I have it down to about, I think it's, what, what did I put it at here? 0.8. Normally it's at a 2.8. Oh, or 2.2 and it's going to seem like just a it's like it's barely moving <clears throat> excuse me but when you're working with the cording we want to make sure that it's not going to move there's not a lot to stitch on and i just find this to be the easiest way to do it is to go forward and back a couple of times almost like you would if you were doing a zigzag across some elastic i'm going to go one more time and back again, and then it's in place. And now we don't have to worry about this end. We can, we can finish up. I clip as I go. I'm one of those people that constantly is clipping threads to get rid of them. You see all those little back and forths? Let me clip this thread here and get rid of that. 
Now, what I'm going to do, oh, that is still sticking up there. I just want to push it in there just further so that it's inside the casing. I could, I could also clip it off. Okay. Tuck it inside. And then we're going to seal this little opening that's here. And I try to match up my, my stitch lines. I'm going to turn this back to 2.4 on my sewing machine and then backstitch because I want to make sure that this is secure and then stitch forward until I hit the other stitch line, top stitch and then backstitch. And there we go. So that seals off one starting point of the elastic. And now that's done. I'm going to clip all these threads so I don't have to go back again and do this again. Now we'll head over to the other side here. That's where we left off with our pin inside with the elastic. I'm going to remove this little holding pin and keep going here. We're going to keep pushing the elastic through the casing. And, you know, I'm using, like I said, the cording. This is the exact same process and the exact same method I use regardless of the width of the elastic. So um, I think on the A frame, I might have enough of the quarter inch that I do have because I brought home enough specifically to do the wall mounted one in our room, our, our closet, um, but not to do these other big boards because that was not my plan, to be honest with you, but I'm home, so I'm doing them. Uh, okay, so now I'm through to the other side and what I do is I simply, this is still connected here, is I'm going to pin this right there, inside there, stretch that out a little bit, and that'll hold the elastic in there. We all have our little methods of doing things, but this for some reason works really well for me. And so then what I do is I take this, I stretch that pin out, I use it as kind of a holding spot, and I'm going to go back and adjust my stitch to be very tight and right there, get this pin out of the way. The last thing we want to do, I'm going to drop the needle here for a second. There we go. We do not want to hit that safety pin. Okay. Now we're going to stitch forward and it's going really, really slow and tiny stitches because we do not want this to come out. I hope you can see that. Okay, one more little grouping. That's across it and we'll go back. And it is in there. So now we can, one more time, we're gonna clip our threads. Okay. And remove this pin. Take it away from that. Now let's just double check. Yep, we're good. It is sewn in there. We'll tuck that in and look at all this thread. I don't know what it is about the thread. I hate all the thread. And change our stitch back again to be 2.4 or 2.0, oh, 2.2, whatever you're used to stitching with. It's kind of like a standard stitch width. And then we're gonna seal this up. 
place your needle down. I'm gonna back stitch. Now, you could have also used your tiny stitches there, and that would have been a, a very nice back stitch as well. So stitch forward. I do stretch the fabric out to make sure that I'm not stitching on top of gatherings within that elastic. And then back stitch and clip our threads. So now this cover, ironing board cover, is done. Let me clip these off for you. Thread, thread, thread. It's really fun to make these. And you know, the once you do one, in a way I sort of was, was not pleased that I started to do three at a time, trying to get this whole room done today. Um, but I got interrupted a lot. And so that caused this to not be done so quickly. So what I'm going to do next is put the uh, elastic in the A-frame. See, look at all these little threads everywhere. But put the elastic in the A-frame and the one for the wall mount, and then we'll show you what they all look like. But now adjust your elastic that's on each one of the ends. And you can do that more once you put this on your ironing board, okay? So now this one is done. We have one side, looks like a shower cap, one side here <laughs> and then the other side. And this is for the big board. I am like super excited about having decent looking ironing board covers. This is going to be great. So let me finish up with the A-frame board and the wall mount and I'll come back and show you what we all look like here. Thanks. Yesterday, I finished all three ironing board covers and I'm really pleased with them. I can't wait to use them. It's just a great addition to my sewing space. The one thing that I wanted to talk about just a tad bit more is the wall mounted ironing board. I didn't like how I finished the, the connection that sits next to the wall. If you can envision a wall mounted ironing board, you open the door and you pull the ironing board down. That piece that's connected to the wall, our, our cover has to be flat, but yet it needs to connect underneath because we don't want it with the pressure of the elastic, we don't want it to push off. So we need to connect it down here. I didn't like what I did. What I did is I just simply used a piece of elastic and stitched it from one side to the other and used a pin just to keep it in there, just to make sure that everything was secure. Well, that's not the right way to finish a project. So I decided to change that. I took the ironing board cover off and here's the flat edge that has to sit against the inside of your ironing board mechanics, okay? So I created a little casing. It measures the same width of my ironing board, which is um, 11 and a half inches. So that's gonna fit nicely, if I can show it this way, underneath my board. I'm gonna sew this edge to get this back up here. I'm going to sew this edge to this side and then I'm going to put a snap over here and a snap on this edge so that when I want to take this off to wash it in the future, all I have to do is undo the snap and pull it right off my ironing board. And um, it'll just make it so much easier. I won't have to see elastic. Everything will be secure. We can just put it in the washing machine and the dryer and it'll be perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead now, put my elastic in here. I'm gonna stitch it to one side of this flat edge. So, and then put my snaps in and I'll show you what that looks like. And then we're gonna go slide this on the wall mounted ironing board. I finished adding my little strap here to the back side of the ironing board. So if you can see that right there, this is the edge that's going to sit against the wall portion of your ironing board. And this strap here will go underneath the board and this on top of the board. 
And I just attached the casing to one flat side inside its seam. I lifted the seam up and just put it in there. And then here's my snap. So this will make it really easy to put on and off the ironing board itself. So let's go put this uh, on my <laughs> wall uh, ironing board and see how it looks. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, I'm in the closet here and that's the back of the ironing board with its cover on it. And I just wanted to show you down below here. This is the little mechanism I was talking about that this is what's holding the ironing board in the wall. And so we needed to put a casing here to hold the cover down on this side of the wall mounted ironing board. So that is the casing that I added to it. And before what I had done is I simply took the elastic and put it underneath here, but I like the look of how it's finished and everything fits really, really nice. Let's see if we can't open this guy up so that you can see everything. So there's the ironing board. It's all nice and I, I love this. It just looks so much better than the old one. And then the section that's back here, this is the edge that I was mentioning, that it needs to be flat. It can't, you know, I didn't want it to go over the bar because then you got a hump there. So, but that could have worked as well. You know, simply wrapping it around this portion of the bar would work as well. But my choice was to go straight here. The um, wool batting is underneath here. And now we're ready to go. I absolutely love it. So I hope you give this a chance and a try. If you have one of these cute little wall mounted ironing boards in your house. There we go. Okay, now we're finished. <laughs> Absolutely finished. I tried to do it in a day and it didn't finish it in a day. And then as you can see from what I did with the wall mounted version, I really wanted to fix it up a little bit and make it really, really uh, perfect for that um, ironing board. So I hope you enjoyed that as well. But the ironing boards that are sitting next to me here, this was the easiest way for me to show you what they look like um, in the room is here's the big board. And here is the A-frame style um, ironing board and its cover as well. On our website, you'll find three different kit sizes for ironing board covers, and you can select any fabric combination that you would like. Um, we have kits already prepared in the colorways and the fabric that are there with the kits, but there's always an option that you can select your own cotton fabric for this project. It's an option called email us, select your own, and we will email you back right away and get your selection. So it can be any one of our 115 inch wide fabrics. Um, we use that fabric simply because it's one piece, it's wide, it's economical, and it's perfect. So remember when you are ordering your kits, measure your ironing board first. These two size options, the A-frame and the big board, are very similar. The only difference is why pay for as much fabric if you only need something that's 15 inches wide. But if your ironing board is a little bit wider than this, you may have to order the big board in order to cover the width of your, of your ironing board. So just make sure you measure ahead of time and order enough for your project and you're good to go. So they include the fabric, the batting, the elastic, and I may put together an option for the wall mounted one, but I'm unsure. Um, there's not a lot of difference between that one and the A-frame, simply be, there's a little less fabric at the end. Um, I only took off maybe um, the amount of a fat quarter was basically what I cut off in order to do the wall mounted version. So. I hope you really enjoyed this and take a moment this spring now, spruce up your room and do something fun with your ironing boards and any other accessories and baskets and things that you use in your special space. So we'll be back with you later. I hope you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us some comments. Let us know what you think. Have a great day.